Well, now we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the ways that we can see how these polar coordinates relate to our good old rectangular coordinate system. First off, I'd like to go ahead and on this picture, I can almost imagine drawing on here a good old classic y-axis and going horizontally over here in x-axis. I can imagine this circle or this circular graph paper for the polar coordinates kind of being overlaid on top of the classic XY coordinate system. And so while there are these points in blue that were obtained by these polar directions, I might be able to see that I could navigate to these same points using Cartesian directions, that is X's and Y's. For example, B is very, very easy to see how I would get there using X and Y directions. Clearly, I would walk three units to the right and zero units up. And so B, while being able to be communicated with these polar coordinates, can also be communicated with these red rectangular coordinates. Notice that C and D have the same thing. It can easily be communicated as 0, comma, negative 1, no difficulty. However, the point of A is a little bit more complicated, right? If I look at this point over here, the Cartesian coordinates are not very clear. I mean, there's some x-coordinate over here that I have to walk to. And it's not quite one unit away, it's not quite two, it's somewhere between one and two. And notice I kind of have the same exact thing sort of happening in the vertical direction. It's hard to maybe see exactly what vertical height this dot is at. And so its coordinates remain a mystery. So our goal in this video is to try to figure out how can I actually go ahead and perform these particular conversions? How can I go ahead and take a blue point and change it into a red point, or vice versa. Well, if you take a look at the next page, we'll see that we have our polar rectangular conversions. And we're gonna start by thinking about converting from a polar point with r's and thetas to a rectangular point, just like we were mentioning up above. And to do this, you'll see that I've sketched out a little picture over here with my x and y axes. So I'll notice that any point that's out in space has a good old red x and y coordinate that model its uh, position. But of course, there's also this blue theta and r that can model its position as well. Notice then that both of these pairs of values will allow me to get to this point. But when I put them all in the same picture, I create this sort of a triangle. And if I was starting with a point in blue and wanting to get to a point in red, I might be able to see the following sort of connection. First off, I'm going to notice that if I was to do the cosine of my angle theta, because I do have a right triangle here, I can start to use some right triangle trig ratios. The cosine of theta here would be my adjacent side of x over my r. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and convert this to just say x equals. I could do that by multiplying r to the other side. And so x is actually identical to r times the cosine. So notice, if I started with a blue point where I already had the r and the theta, this formula could allow me to compute that red rectangular x-coordinate. Okay, so how then would I get the matching y-coordinate for this point? Well, you might not be too surprised to see that if I set up a sine of theta, that would be equal to y divided by r, and then I could reset this up as y is equal to r times the sine of theta. Now, these formulas here are going to be unbelievably valuable. They're so important for being able to convert from polar to rectangular. And again, we won't just be using these ideas in Chapter 7 this semester, but as you move into Calc 3 in future semesters, you will actually use this idea very heavily. Well, let's see how we can then go the other way. What if I was starting with the red rectangular point and I wanted to end up with coordinates for the blue polar point? That is, I want to find my r and my theta if someone already tells me my x and my y. Well, one thing here might be pretty easy to see. It's really, really easy to find r because I have a nice right triangle. So I know there's a relationship between x, y, and r in the Pythagorean theorem. So this right here can help me find the value of r. Now, to find the value of theta, things can be a little bit different. One thing that I could say is that I know that the tangent of theta is definitely going to be equal to, oops, not x over y, but I could write that as y 
over x, right? That's what the tangent of theta is going to be equal to. Now, one thing that I have to be careful of is that, well, I can't just take inverse tangent of both sides to find my theta, because again, theta may be an angle that the inverse tangent is unable to find. Inverse tangent can only find certain angles. And so I do have to be a little bit careful here. While I know that this is true, I can say here that to find theta, some adjustments may need to be made. Now, what this might mean is that maybe I can go ahead and do something like uh, an inverse trig function, not find the angle theta, but another angle, and maybe manipulate to get to the angle that I want. Maybe I don't use the tangent function to create a relationship here. I could use like a sine or a cosine, or maybe I could use whatever function is easiest for me, so that way it's uh, a lot simpler to try to identify or narrow down what that theta value is. What we'll see in the next video is exactly how we can do this uh, process, and we'll take a look at examples number two and three.